As a child, I never knew the meaning of genocide and the history behind it. As the years pass, more and more books on genocide are becoming accessible to elementary and middle school children. However, genocide is still not incorporated into the elementary curriculum. Those who cannot learn from our history are doomed to repeat it. I ponder on this quote by philosopher George Santayana when I see the absence of genocide in children's literature. I, be I believe children have the right to start learning about our history in relation to genocide as well as other cultures. In order to provide a wide range of diverse books, we must also include sensitive topics like genocide. This knowledge will help children stay away from the dangers of single stories for our culture and many others. Nigerian writer Chimamanda Adichie is well known for her TED talk, The Danger of a Single Story. I have created a sketch note on her TED talk to capture a visual representation of the main ideas and themes of her speech. In her speech, Adichie says, when we reject the single story, when we realize that there is never a single story about any place, we regain a kind of paradise. She warns about the dangers of listening to a single story of a person or culture, such as the risk of stereotyping, misunderstanding, and ignorance. I have chosen a selection of children's books that share the same theme, genocide, and also cover a variety of different cultures. The first time I remember learning about genocide was in high school. At that point, the story of the Holocaust became the definition of genocide. That story became the single story for Jews who lived in Germany. That is the danger of a single story that schools unintentionally introduce to young learners. Therefore, I believe by introducing all of these different cultures and their dark periods of history, dealing with genocide through children's literature can demonstrate how genocide has impacted those cultures from perspectives of young children and adults. Why isn't genocide incorporated into the elementary curriculum? Is it because it is inappropriate for young children to learn about the atrocities and crimes committed towards certain cultures? Are they too young to understand such horrific events? I believe that we underestimate the minds of children. When 9-11 happened, many teachers across the country had to explain who, what, and how the events came to happen. Many children and families have been impacted by this event. Therefore, many books were published to help children cope, understand, and relate to that day. Every year on that day, teachers will have class discussions to remind children of the lost and survivors of that day and how it has affected our country since. I say we give them the opportunity to have books about genocide 
available to them in their school libraries. Teachers can utilize certain holidays, current news, or celebrations to talk about the history of certain cultures in relation to genocide. One huge topic that should be discussed that pertains to our history is the issues behind Columbus Day. This is a very sensitive subject to many Americans. There are always many sides to every story. And in this case, schools have only told one for many years. I'm glad that middle schools, high schools, and colleges have incorporated Native American history into their curriculum. However, elementary schools have not made such academic advances. Can you imagine the confusion and emotions children who come from a Native American background go through each year during Columbus Day? They are taught one thing from their schools and something completely different at home. The Birch Bark House by Louise Etheridge is an amazing story told by a young Ojibwa girl about her Native American life and family. It is a book that portrays the events of genocide and how it impacted this young girl's life and everyone's around her. If we take a closer look at these illustrations, we can use them as a window into Omakae's world. Through her facial expressions, we can determine her personality and how she perceives the world around her. This book would be the perfect mirror window and sliding door some children need to introduce them to the topic of genocide, but through the perspective of a child so that they can relate and or understand in a sense. Mirrors, Windows, and Sliding Doors is a groundbreaking paper written by literacy professor and children's literature expert, Rudine Sims Bishop. I have created a sketch note to highlight the main ideas and messages she portrays in her paper. Bishop explains how books can be mirrors, windows, and sliding doors for children. Bishop also expresses the importance of diverse books for children when she says, books are sometimes windows, offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. These windows are also sliding glass doors and readers have only to walk through in an imagination to become part of whatever world has been created or recreated by the author. Literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Another reason to incorporate diverse books about genocide is to give children who come from different cultural backgrounds the knowledge of their own culture's history. Most adults believe that we should shelter them from the realities of the past. However, this is just holding them back from finding personal or emotional connections to these stories. Tree Girl by Ben Michelson tells a story of a young Guatemalan girl who witnesses the massacre of her people 
and the hardships she must endure to survive the aftermath. This is an enlightening book that teaches children perseverance, compassion, and realism. The next three books take place across the world. The Sky of Afghanistan by Anna Elue tells the dreams and wishes of a better world through the, through the perspective of a young Afghan girl. During a time of war in Afghanistan, this story captures the true essence of what children yearn for and dream. It has a meaningful message it has a meaningful message of peace and hopes that children will understand through the eyes of this young girl. The illustrations in this book are captivating and transport you into the young girl's dreams. This book will serve as a sliding door for many children to comprehend the underlying message of this story. Half Spoon of Rice, a survival story of the Cambodian genocide by I.C. Smith, tells the story of nine-year-old Nat and his journey of survival during the Cambodian genocide from the 1970s. This story is very emotional and horrific. However, its illustrations and words are told in a child-friendly way. This book is another example where kids can relate to this story based on their culture or by connecting with this narrator on an emotional level. It teaches children about friendship, courage, and heroic adventures. The last book I want to discuss is Hidden, a child's story of the Holocaust by Locke Devuler. This story is told through a comic style that transports you into Dunia's world. This graphic novel shows the events of the Holocaust and how it affects Dunya's life. It is an emotional roller coaster as you watch her lose both parents and have to do as she's told to survive. If we do a close reading on the illustrations, we can interpret the meaning between picture and text. In this illustration, we can see the bond between grandchild and grandmother based on their gestures toward each other. You begin to have an emotional connection to this as you compare your bond with your own family. Analyzing these illustrations, you are instantly transported into this horrifying scene with Donia as you see the fear in her eyes. As you read the text, then I tried to get out, but there was something on top of the wood panel. Then I started to cry. As the reader, you feel her panic through the text and illustration. This is a great example of Bishop's sliding glass door reference. In this next set of illustrations, you notice the sad facial expressions made by Mrs. Pericard as she cuts out and burns the Star of David. Lastly, in this illustration, the illustrator shows a different perspective as we view the Star of David through Donia's point of view. The text below reads, really humiliating. This gives the audience a sense of isolation and humiliation. It is a unique perspective that children will be able to relate to 
and understand the history of Jewish people and all of Europe. After reading these books, I have learned so much about genocide and its impact on many cultures. It has changed my way of thinking and has given me the knowledge to investigate more about how their lives were changed in the aftermath. However, I also regret not knowing about these stories at a younger age. I believe I would have had a different way of thinking and outlook on certain cultures if I had been educated on their stories. This is why I believe it is important to make these stories accessible to children. It can not only teach them valuable lessons on the mistakes of the past, but also change their outlook on life itself. Embracing diversity and understanding one's culture comes by learning more than a single story. In order to advance as human beings and become better versions of ourselves, we must start with the young minds of our future.